some places, lots of ruts and a mud puddle out there, and the longest continuous burning tire fire anywhere in the world. Silver Springs, Nevada. On line three, we have the lovely, or not so lovely, Aaron. Hey, Aaron. What's, What's up? up? You lovely hey, you person. Know, we have a little overcast going on out here this morning. Uh, kind of cold, going to be about the mid 40s. I, I guess the big news in the agriculture industry right now is DuPont and the Dow Chemical Company have agreed to a merger. Uh, of course, these are two of the oldest chemical companies, United States chemical producers. We have uh, 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 Monsanto being the other one. Uh, DuPont, uh, if people remember, they were the ones with the nylon that helped William Randolph Hearst uh, uh, manipulate the entire country on, uh, or the world for that matter, about the hazards of the gateway drug marijuana and gave us free for madness. Um, this is, is that? probably something, uh, what's that? Hearst. Hearst? William Randolph Hearst. William Randolph Hearst. What happened was William Randolph Hearst had a patent for wood pulp paper. And oh, DuPont oh, had a oh. patent on nylon. Both of them were basically useless to him at the time because the majority of paper and the majority of rope was made out of hemp, a yeah. cannabis product, and that's how it got tied in. That's how hemp actually became illegal. Hemp was never, you can't really get high on hemp. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the fallacies. It just happened to be in the same, classified in the same family. But that's how those two products that we know today, uh, I mean, paper as we know it today, is made with what they call wood pulp. Yeah. Uh, it's not made out of the, the old stuff like our Constitution is written on uh, hemp. Um, there is a lot of scrutiny. They're, they're, they're talking about some intense regulatory scrutiny on this with an overlap of their agriculture business. Uh, uh, that's what's going to happen. And, and I want to give this one phrase here that they're using. This is what they are calling themselves. Um, let me see, I've got to find it again here. It, uh, uh, it, well, no, it's, it's the way they have worded their products is what it is. Selling seed and crop protection chemicals. Again, that Monsanto propaganda machine in high gear right there, they sell poison. They're, 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 they're not selling us chemicals. They're selling us poison. It doesn't protect it might protect the food from damage or, or the crop from a damage, but it doesn't protect us. Some of the comments around the country that are coming in about this merger, monopolies used to be illegal back before corporate America completely took over the government and the court system. Too big to fail and too big to regulate are major wake-up calls. Money now runs government and big money runs big government. Somebody that, uh, uh, their screen name is Labor, the rich get richer, and we all have less choice and competition to choose from. If you watch, if you haven't watched the human experiment yet, then you're living in the dark as far as chemicals are concerned. We need to have a committee that actually tests the chemicals yep. used for safety. Lady Ann responded, wow, if they have three or four billion dollars if they're going to save because that's what this merger is supposed to do it's a money issue three to four billion dollars they can finally pay the people of propol a proper settlement for the murder and mayhem caused by union carbide and of course union carbide is a, sub sub a subsidiary of dow chemical mm -hmm. company yeah, um, so we'll have to see how that plays out how about paying the vietnam veterans for their suffering due to agent orange you know what i i, I still think that and this is what I don't understand, how the courts ha have allowed some of this stuff to happen. I I'm sorry, I go tell a judge, it was an accident, Your Honor. I didn't mean it. I, I can't be held liable. He was was He's going to slap my head for being stupid. Yeah. You know, it's just that simple. You, you, and I don't understand how this company gets away with it. And again, it comes right back to who do your elect officials represent because uh, uh, these guys are saying it, hey, Big money is running big, big government now. So it's a weird thing. And speaking of big money, Sean Parker, former Facebook president, he's pushing, he's a billionaire, of course, pushing a bunch of money into legalizing marijuana over in California in 2016. Uh, the, what, all, all their efforts, they got it on 
the ballot for 2016. So we'll see if California's going to be the next to say, okay, you can go sit on the corner and smoke it. We're not going to give you a ticket anymore. Wow. It's kind of that way over in, uh, what's the, the town across the bay from San Francisco, Stanislaus? Oakland. Not Oakland, Stanislaus or... Stanislaus. Stanislaus. Oh, Stanislaus. Yeah. yeah. I guess they're smoking on the reef over there all the time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, a lot of a lot of law enforcement agencies in California, if you have less than an ounce for personal use, uh, they, they pretty much leave you alone. The way yeah, yeah, you know, uh, they, they, they only really get on somebody that they find, you know, their their truck has got 100 pounds in it or, or, uh, over there, you know, uh, people transporting and really doing something illegal other than just sitting there and smoking it. Uh and, you know, I, I haven't been living, I haven't lived in the Bay Area or in California since, what was it, 1991. But even back then, it was just a lot more relaxed position from a government standpoint uh, as far as marijuana went. It wasn't something like, it, back in the 90s, even here in Nevada, I mean, God, they, they beat you up for it. <laughs> 90s? It how, like how about it. last year? I, I, yeah, it, right it, now, today, I mean, if you get caught with an ounce, I mean that's a felony in this state. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think. I I, I mm. think uh, Nevada has deregulated somewhat on it. It's a huge, huge one. If you have a, a little bit of uh, uh, smoke in a bag, you know, a little bit of uh, marijuana in a bag or a couple joints, it's still illegal. It, it is not it, unless you have a medical card. It is still illegal, and I, if I'm not mistaken. The fines, the fines for that are over a thousand dollars. I mean, it's like twelve, fifteen hundred bucks by your t- time you're done with this fee and that fee and the court assessments and all that kind of stuff. So it's not. Uh, I mean, you could have one marijuana cigarette in your pocket in Nevada. It could become very pricey joint, if you will. Yeah, no doubt about that. <laughs> John Sinclair from the radical group, uh, the MC5, back in Detroit. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a he had a sticker out. Walk a mile for a camel in 15 years for a joint. Joint, yeah. Yeah. I actually, yeah. I actually knew an individual that had a custom uh, motorcycle built for show, <coughs> and it had a marijuana leaf that was laid on the gas tank. You know, it was put on the gas tank. Just an art thing. And then clear coated. It was art, and it was shown several places. Um, eventually, what happened is one police police department in a southern, I will say, backward state, realized it was an actual marijuana leaf, confiscated the uh, the bike, and the guy did one year yeah, in the state. You know what? There was a guy in California that did that on a surfboard and the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah well, he, he, he laid marijuana leaves on a, you know, finished, with, or a decoupage is the word that's coming in my head, but, you know, he put the finish on his thing. That's what he did. He had... I think it was like two marijuana leaves or something, and they booked him for possession. Well, it, you know, it not only cost uh, him a year in prison, he lost a motorcycle. But at the time, was, yeah. you know, probably worth $30,000. Today's dollars, it would probably be worth close to 100 But, uh, wow, you know, that's what happens when you do something like that in one of those backwoods southern kick states. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of crazy. Uh, you know, I, I got a uh, recommendation for everybody for this weekend. Go get stoned or what? <laughs> well, no. What I was getting on that one. I was you need to go get, you, you need to go get your favorite person to do some huggy body, kissy face, dance in the moonlight <laughs> because tomorrow it's Frank's birthday. Chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra, oh, there you go. 100 mm-hmm. years old tomorrow. Put some of his music on. He has some of the greatest love songs ever put out. And of course, he did it his way. And you're playing in the back in New York. Yeah, we can hear. And it. that's Frank right now. Yeah. yeah. Well, Aaron, how do we get a hold of you out of Dallas at LLC? Hey, it's seven seven five two three zero on the telephone, folks. Don't forget HamiltonSkiLine.com for all your ski information. www.alladay LLC on the website, and we are posting items that we're liquidating every day. It's going to be a great weekend, folks. Let's all have a good time. Let's all be safe out there. All righty. That's Aaron from Silver Springs, Nevada, wishing everyone a good weekend. And like we say here, be safe. Let's go to line one. On line one.